hello everyone and welcome to this new tutorial of plexus so today i'm gonna st i'm gonna show you how to take in consideration the thermal effect in plexus but before i start if you're near here uh, subscribe and like my videos and let's start so i've been asked a lot on my videos how can we take in consideration the thermal effect in plexus so if you have any other questions just leave them in the comment section and i will make videos on your questions so this is the pdf that i'll be using i'm gonna leave a link in order for you to download this pdf in the comment section so here we're gonna take the example of a lock which is empty this lock will transport chips it will be plenty of water it will fill in water to take ship from this level to this level here or from this level to this level here so it's uh, this lock is empty due to, uh, due to maintenance which will result in um, high temperature in the lock and here it will be a low temperature so which will generate the expansion in this concrete lock and we'll have moments on the side of these walls here so this is the geometry of the project. First of all, we're gonna insert, uh, we're gonna start a new project. We're gonna take the project table sheet, uh, tab sheet, project properties, model elements. This is the contour. Gonna press on OK, and this the project is made. So this is the project properties here. Then we're gonna create a borehole to define the soil will be at x equals 0 minus 16 then we're gonna create and assign the materials so the first material is sand hs small drained this is the parameters of the sand and it will be the concrete which is linear elastic non-porous and these are the properties of the uh, concrete so if you don't know what's the difference between HS small and linear elastic, I've made several videos on this topic. You can find them also on this channel. <coughs> so these are the, temp uh, the thermal parameters in plexus. We can see them here. This is the thermal parameter. It's very important to put these parameters exactly as they are in real life. So this is the conductivity of concrete, this is of the sand, the soil density, the component of expansion also. It's very important to use these factors as they have direct effect on the moment which will be generated and the displacement which will be generated from the lock. This is strength reduction factor, should also be taken into consideration. Here it's equal to 1 because the sand can move. Here it's equal to 0 0.67 because the concrete will have a pressure in it. So then we're going to define the structural elements. We're going to draw it as a soil polygon. The snapping option can be selected and the snapping can be set to 0 0.5 easily create the polygon. I've already also talked about snapping. The concrete material will be assigned, create a line in the side toolbar, create the thermal flow boundary option, extended menu, create thermal boundaries, select the boundaries and the temperature. So all of this is here. We've created the polygon, we've drawn half of the lock and we've created a thermal flow boundary. We can see here. The thermal flow boundary. We're gonna generate the mesh, view the mesh, and this is the mesh. So here I'm gonna show you the mesh, which should be the same as the PDF. As you can see, it's the same. 
so now after generating the mesh you're gonna go to flow condition you're gonna leave it like this and we're gonna go to stage construction so first of all it's the initial phase here you can see initial phase stage construction uh, calculation type work pressure calculation select earth gradient for thermal calculation option and stage construction so these you can see them here if chosen here earth gradient we can ignore the temperature or steady thermal flow the steady thermal flow is not what we're going to use here it's the earth gradient since there's earth all around the lock then we're going to go to phase one phase one is the construction we're gonna um, we're gonna put the steady state we're gonna leave it the steady state uh, thermal flow we're gonna set the displacement to zero and we're gonna turn on the concrete you can see here it's phase one we've turned on the concrete we've turned off the soil we've set the displacement to zero and we've put steady state thermal flow then the final phase oh uh, by the way we've put here the here is the thermal function i'm gonna talk about that later here is the model condition the climate we've left it here 283 kelvin degrees then we're gonna select we're gonna leave it like this and then we're gonna put phase two which is the heating you're gonna create a thermal function here i'm gonna press an okay so this is how we can create it thermal function edit we've add a new one but we've already have this one here it's harmonic the amplitude the period time by day and this is it we've launched the calculation and here we can see the results We can see the displacement under phase one. This is phase two. We can see how we made a larger displacement here. This is the initial phase. Now we can see the stress. We can see the stress created here. can see the principal stress here is the the phone mesh you can also create a curve manager I've already made a video of this one here we can see the difference between this face here and this face here the pressure the effective stress so if you have any questions just leave them in the comment section it's all for this video